Agora eu vou dar um recadinho do nosso querido parceiro Cambly, que também ainda está com a super promoção dele de Black Friday, que é 60% de desconto em qualquer plano anual. E é incrível, gente. Vale muito a pena porque tem professor disponível 24 horas por dia e você pode colocar tudo que você aprende aqui no Inglês de Nicro Rádio e no Sound School lá e nas técnicas de conversação maravilhosa que a gente vai te ensinar falando com o professor nativo, ao vivo, ou seja, é melhor do mundo, né? Esse pacotão Sound School e Cambly vale muito a pena. Aproveita o desconto, 60% de desconto com os códigos Rádio 60 OFF, OFF com dois Fs, e também para os Kids, Rádio 60 OFF com dois Fs, Kids, tá bom? E também é isso, gente. Agora é só aproveitar o nosso querido episódio. Now, on with the show. Hello, hello, hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Inglês no Cru Rádio. My name is Foster, and I am here with... Alexia. Hi, guys. How how are you, Foster? I'm doing well. Yeah? Cannot complain. What about you? I'm fine. Today is a good day. It's sunny outside. Everything's fine. Nice. Awesome. So, Alexia, do you want to start this episode by talking about what we did yesterday and the video we recorded? Yeah, so... Yesterday, we went for a walk near Foster's family house here. My family's house. I, I, yeah. Yeah. You said Foster family house. Ah, family's house. Yes. Do you know why we add the apostrophe S? Yes, of course. Because it's the house from your family. Yes, we are talking about possession. It's a possessive. Yes, but would I say like Foster's family's house, right? It's your family, so it's a possession. And then the house is a possession of your family. <laughs> I don't know. You're getting quite complicated there. I, I think I, I'm right. Foster's family's house. Yeah. Yeah. So who does the family belong to? Yeah. My family. And then who does the house belong to? Your family. Yes. So two possessives. Wow. I was pretty good at that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we went for a walk. And then we decided to record a video. And this video we were talking about <laughs> what? We decided. Means I turned on the camera and just said, hey, <laughs> Alexia, what do you want to talk about? You said, I don't know. I said, vocabulary. <laughs> and turns out that it was our first IGTV on Instagram. And people loved it so much. I was so impressed and so surprised about it that we decided to record a whole episode about it. I don't really understand IGTV, but we, Alexia is already doing a lot of cool stuff on Instagram and we will be doing a lot more. So if you're not following Inglês no Cru Instagram. First of all, what a shame. Come on. Or maybe someone is against so, some social media. They don't But use it. But it's us. We okay. are so cool. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we started recording a video and I had kind of a rant. Do you know the word rant? I remember... Uh. <laughs> no. This is a perfect transition to our conversation today. So the word rant é desabaf. Isso, that's right. Yes. So I had a rant about vocabulary. So a lot of our students, a lot of people all the time ask some form of the question, how can I improve my vocabulary? Or some related question to vocabulary, right? Mm -hmm. So... In linguistics, we talk about the terms active and passive a lot. And we also do this in the context of vocabulary and acquiring new words. So, Alexia, can you imagine what active vocabulary would be? Yeah, so our active vocabulary are the words that we are used to say already. We are used to saying Yeah, active vocabulary refers to words that you know and you actively use in conversation. Mm -hmm. Right? So, those words that are easy for us to remember, it's right inside our brains and it's easy just to say it. Perfect. Exactly. And the idea with passive vocabulary, these are words that you probably understand if you are reading 
Perhaps you could use these words in writing. So you have seen these words, you have heard these words, you are familiar with them, but you do not use them in conversation. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So that's kind of the idea is your passive vocabulary is always way, way bigger than your active vocabulary. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course. So you know a lot more words than you are using. But you're not used to say those words. Right, right. And there are a lot of reasons I think people do not use and really access this entire vocabulary. The principal reason, I think, is pronunciation. Because you have a word that you are very comfortable with and you use it. And perhaps you have a better word to say the same thing, but you don't know exactly how to say it. So you understand it when people say it, but you don't really feel comfortable saying it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's kind of the point is it's very, very ineffective just to learn new words, to use an app or take, I don't know, notes on new words. When you already have this huge vocabulary that you know you're just not using. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Does that sound like something you're interested in? Yes, of course it is. Because the more that I know and the more words that I can... How do you say? When you... You don't have to make the change, but you can have these words as um, substitutes. Substitutes? Yes. Because yeah. when I'm talking with someone that it's more formal or informal or that you need to go to work and make a presentation or write an email that has to be more formal or whatever, you have these words there that you already know and you know that you can use for this kind of situation. Yeah, yeah. So the example we gave yesterday in the video was think about the word big. So big is definitely in your active vocabulary. Alexia, don't you think? Yeah. So I asked you, what are other ways you could say that? The first thing you said, I believe, was huge. Huge. Which I also think is in your active vocabulary. But then we talked about words like gigantic, enormous, immense. So there are all of these different ways to say big that can be a little bit more sophisticated or perhaps a better fit in the context. I have a question. Yeah. Can you explain how to pronounce immense again? Immense. So it's almost an E, right? Immense, not immense. Immense. Yeah, it kind of depends on stress a little bit. Maybe if I really wanted to articulate something, I could say it's immense. Because when you said it, I didn't know the word. And then when you explain it and when I wrote it, okay, I know this word. Of course I do. Yeah. But the way that you said it, I didn't recognize it. That's the definition of passive vocabulary. Yeah. So the idea is we have all of these other words that we are not utilizing correctly. So imagine in Portuguese, if you only had the word grande mm -hmm. to talk about things that are big, right? That would be very strange. You would sound like probably less than a teenager, like an eight-year-old who hasn't <laughs> word other words like enorme. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Gigante, enorme, muito grande, <laughs> montão. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So do you have another example of a word that you use all of the time? We can use a word cute. Cute. Yeah. Why are you thinking of that word <laughs> when you're looking at me? <laughs> Because you are so cute and you can, I don't know, you can buy a shirt that it's cute. You can buy shoes that are cute. You can see a dog and say, how cute. Okay. And yeah, Alexia thinks a lot of things are cute. So can you think of synonyms or substitutes for the word cute? If you see... A nice little puppy and you want to talk to it and you look at the owner and you say, ah, he's so cute. What is another thing you could also say? Fluffy. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't know. He's so sweet. 
Yeah, uh, that's a okay synonym and not a direct synonym, but closely related. But you see how powerful this can be? Mm-hmm. For all of the cute things in the world, you are only using the word cute. Yeah. But there are a ton of other options. And this freaks me out. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So imagine, I imagine you know the word adorable. Oh, yeah. So adorable. That's true. Your mom says it, says it a lot. Adorbs. Yeah. <laughs> no, she doesn't say that. But. No, I just see some people writing that in text messages. <laughs> Let's think of other ones. Precious. Okay. I, I, I understand what precious would be very weird for me to use it. No, my, my mom says that all the time. Like a little baby or dog. Ah, she's precious. <laughs> That's a direct synonym for cute, at least in the case of my mother. Yeah, I I think about Lord of the Rings immediately. Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of changed, changed the meaning of the word. <laughs> How about the word lovely? Ah, yes, that's true. So lovely. Yeah. 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 Can you think of other examples? No, I can't. That's a problem, I think. How about charming? Yeah, but I have a question. For example, I wouldn't turn to a dog owner and say, Oh, he's so lovely. Can I pet him? It's weird, you know, because lovely for me, it's more about a situation like it was so lovely to go out to have dinner with you last night. Right. The movie was so lovely, whatever. Right. So this is kind of the point that I'm trying to make is when you are only using your active vocabulary and your active vocabulary can be quite small. So, for example, if you only have the word cute to talk about things that you like and you think are beautiful and pretty, then that really is, it's a constraint for you. It's very limiting. So, for example, charming. If you see a cute little house, I think a better word in that situation would be, ah, it's a charming little house. Mm -hmm. You know? So, of course, it depends on the situation. Yeah. And if you had a lovely dinner, you don't want to say, ah, the restaurant was very cute. You would want to say the restaurant was lovely. It was charming. So, depending on the situation, having more options really, really helps you sound a lot more like a native speaker. So, at the end of the day, of course, you can continue using the word cute, for example, for a dog. No problem at all. But if you go to a restaurant or go to the movies and watch a lovely movie, you can change your vocabulary for, from cute to lovely or adorable or precious or whatever. Yeah. You just need to learn how to use it depending on the situation. So how I would use A plus it. student here. <laughs> so how I would apply this to in real life, how I would put this in practice. First is just think about words that you use all of the time that are very common. And then you can think about synonyms of those words. You can also search for that on the internet. And then when you look at synonyms, automatically you will see a lot of words that you know, but you don't really use. That's an easy way to do that and then start trying to use those new words instead Creating of the words. Yeah. Okay. And these are words that you already know and you use a very similar word all the time. So it's e really easy just to substitute, right? Perfect. And the last recommendation that I would make, if you want to improve your vocabulary, don't try to learn new words. Just listen to things or read things that you've already read before. And if you see words or hear expressions that you think, okay, I know what that means, but I never use that or I never use that expression in that way, really try to start incorporating that into your everyday conversation. Yeah. Cool. Any questions about active, passive vocabulary? No, not for now. But that was really cool because... It keeps me thinking about how, do you know when someone is predictable and how I am predictable with my English and I need to <laughs> get better at this. Yeah, 
we need some surprises. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. So I hope you guys found this helpful and we will talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Mais um episódio aqui do Inglês de Necro Rádio acabou e eu só gostaria de agradecer a você que está aqui todos os dias conosco, nos escutando, aprendendo, melhorando o seu inglês. E como sempre, eu dou o meu recado final falando que você sempre pode dar um suporte maravilhoso para esse podcast que você tanto ama indo lá no nosso site inglesnecru.com deixando o seu e-mail. Desse jeito você vai receber materiais de grátis, recursos de grátis e vai descobrir quando é que a próxima turma do Sound School vai abrir. Então vale muito a pena. Muito obrigada pelo carinho e a gente se vê no próximo episódio.